In this unit, we want to address how you can create a simple and supportive online learning environment with technology. Teaching online gives you the chance to create a flexible, creative, and individual or personalized learning experience for your students. But the variety of tools and functionalities can be pretty overwhelming, especially for instructors who have never experienced teaching in an online setting before. This unit names the three most important aspects of your online teaching ecosystem and gives you concrete suggestions for how to deal with those aspects. Online teaching isn't as easy as copying your established teaching strategies to digital applications. We've established this in every unit of this course. It's about expanding your methods and skills to convey knowledge to students, connecting students in real collaborative networks, and using solid sources for individual learning. The main thing we have to tell you about technology is this. You will face some technical difficulties when teaching online. There is no way around it. Everything that's combined with technology comes with issues. Surely you've been in at least one video conference that's gone awry before. Whether you can't hear someone else at all through their, though their lips are moving, or if it sounds like someone's screaming into your headphones, it's important to take a deep breath and react accordingly. You will get used to it. The art of teaching online and technology is not so much about fixing all of these issues, but rather in how you handle them in the moment and normalize them so that they detract as little as possible from your and your students' overall experience. It will, of course, also depend on your setup. If you're on a more basic online conferencing system, like we use at Chiron, or maybe a more sophisticated platform with enhanced functions, like maybe built-in tech support if you're really lucky, Regardless, you should become as comfortable as possible with the thought that things will probably go wrong at some point and come prepared to develop your own tool set to overcome these issues. At Chiron, given our students are located all over the globe and in various contexts, some of them calling in from the comfort of their own room, some of them from a cafe, some of them from a refugee camp, we can't really control all of their technological setups or the internet connection that they have. One thing we tell our instructors at Chiron is not only to expect issues with technology, but to address them, acknowledge them in the classroom with students, and maybe even laugh them off when appropriate. If, as an instructor, you show aggravation or frustration at these issues, it won't help the students move past them either and get back to what they're learning about. The better approach is to acknowledge, address as well as you can given the situation. Use your best judgment here. Is it possible to even address this, or will it take up too much session time? Is there a quick fix, like just turning off the video or switching browsers? And then move on. Again, that's acknowledge, address as well as you can given the situation, and move on. Online meetings allow us to share knowledge directly with others wherever they are. Products like Skype, Google Hangouts Meet, or GoToMeeting are a great start in creating a productive online teaching space. There are, of course, more elaborate and comprehensive programs out there. For instance, Adobe Connect and Solia. But if you're looking for something less resource intensive, any of those initially listed products are great to try out. At Tyron, we have been using Google Hangouts Meet for the past two and a half years. When you're selecting your online meeting service, make sure that your choice allows for the following functionalities. All students should at the very least be able to talk to each other directly and write in a class-wide chat box. For a more personal experience, look for functions that include spontaneous comments, feedback and reactions, and this can range from student to student chat boxes, hand raise function, or emoji integration. You'll find a list of tools in the additional resource section, Listen in a comparative way. Let's also not forget the lesson of Canadian philosopher Marshall McLuhan. The medium is the message. This means that the nature of the channel we use to communicate is not neutral. It has an invisible but extremely permeating impact on the message we are trying to communicate. Even bigger than the message itself, McLuhan argues. One of his most famous examples is how movies impact our perception, because of their ability to play with transformed conception of speed and time. This, of course, shapes our perception of reality, as well as our whole set of implicit values that comes with it. Check out the resource section if you wish to learn more about it. Let's now try to reflect on how the digital teaching media may influence your perception of your students, for example, as active agents or passive learners. For instance, some tools display the video or images of students as prominently as the instructor, or in a circle with equally sized images, for example. 
while others don't even show the videos of students while the instructor is talking. As an exercise now, let's write down how you think the Google Classroom environment, for example, could influence the way you see your students compared to the last offline situation you were in with students.